Hi everyone, it's Christy. We are here to do some triple tuck tag tucks. That's what I'm calling them because I added an extra tuck. Uh, this is a tuck that you'll add to your page. We'll glue it either on two sides, yeah, just on two sides, and that way you can tuck behind it. You'll be able to tuck here. Let me use this little piece to show you. You'll be able to tuck behind, you'll be able to tuck here, and you'll be able to tuck here. I'm not going to put anything in there because it's just glued down and not dry yet. Um, but this is made out of one large 4x8 tag um, that I've cut out of the background, um, one of the background pages of the Shabby Chic French Collection Journal Kit by G. Kerr. Um, so let me show you how to do this. It's really fun. These are four by eight tags. These are the two um, that I started with that became those. So let me get these out of the way. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the first thing that I want to do is cut these tags down. Now, I usually do tags with every journal, um, and I always make these large tags. Sometimes these will go in the front uh, and back cover pockets just the way they are, you know, inked, maybe a little lace, whatever. Um, but this time I wanted to make a tuck out of them because the kit came with lots of stuff and I printed out a lot of medium sized tags and and little tiny tags and, and other things. So I uh, just thought I would take these and cut them down a little bit. So I want to cut these down. Like I said, these are, let me measure them. They are eight and a quarter by three and three quarter. Uh, when I uh, did the clipping mask, they're supposed to, supposed to be four by eight. I don't know why they don't print out the size you make them, but that's, you know, beside the point. Okay, let me get this clip out of the way because it's keeping my cutter. There we go. Um, I'm gonna cut this at three inches from the bottom. Just cut off the bottom three inches. That's going to be our tuck, our first tuck. Same thing on this one. I'm just going to cut three, uh, three inches off the bottom. Like that. Okay. Now the next thing, I want to keep these somewhere where I can see them. Um, I remember, remember, remember what I did. Um, the next thing that I want to do is this went like this. So I think I turned this this way. Did I? No, I went this way with it. And on this one, yeah, this way. So I want to cut um, the corner. That way I stop having to remember which corner goes which way. So that way I know this goes here, okay? And so I want to ink around these and then I'm going to sew around. You can see where I've done here. Um, I've just sewn a straight stitch around there, but I need to sew around this piece first um, this way. And um, yeah, just around around there, and then I'll sew around the whole thing, and then I'll apply the lace with the zigzag. So um, the first thing we're going to do here then is ink. So how's everybody doing? We are doing okay. Um, it's really quiet and kind of weird around here. Um, I did venture out to get medication yesterday and um, the pharmacy you know has everything taped off so that everybody's six feet apart so it's kind of nice you know um, that they're taking the extra precautions still no um, toilet paper on the aisles, but 
I found most everything else that we've needed. Um, I am going to need to go venture out and get some meat next week, so running shy of that. I did not um, have my freezer full before all this happened. So we've been kind of trying to eat up bits and pieces of things and you know one night everybody might have something different for dinner just because I want to clean out that freezer but yeah although I did make stew yesterday so it was very good okay so those are inked so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pause you for a second. I'm going to run a stitch around this way. Like I said, you want to do this. And to get around the corner, you know, when you get about to the corner, just take one stitch, pivot a little bit, take one stitch, pivot a little bit, take one stitch, pivot a little bit. I do this at a 3.5 on my sewing machine for, for the um, stitch length. I don't know if that's the same across the board, but that's what I use. I also use the same on my zigzag. It's 3x5 and 3x5 both ways, the distance and the width. So I will sew a straight stitch around this way, straight stitch around this way, and then I'll sew the lace on. I'm using um, this piece of lace right here. Um, just scraps that I have. This is a great project for scraps. Like I said, this whole book, Shabby Chic, use your scraps if you have a um oops everything's falling down if you have a snippet jar like this i have one of those little pub mix from costco i have it full of trims and things and pieces parts and i just pull things out of there when i need it this is a great project for that so anyway i'm gonna pause and i will be right back Okay, so all I have done since you last saw me was sew around here, sew around here, and sew this piece of lace on. It looks great already. Um, we could totally um, call that done. But, you know, I've got to find my hole puncher. Um, why stop there? So let's make it a tag by punching a hole. Um, there we go. You could, though, if you don't, you know, if you, oh, that didn't go all the way through, shoot. Got some little things stuck in there, I can't see. There we go. Um, if you want to stop there, stop there. That that will work. This is a um, double tuck, tag tuck, but we want to make it a triple. So let's get these little hearts. These hearts are um, also part of the ephemera pieces that come with this kit. I don't know why I didn't cut these out ahead of time. Sorry guys. Hearts are not too hard to cut, but when you're on camera everything seems to go wonky okay so I'm hoping my internet comes back up the kids have just informed me that the internet is down they've been doing an awful lot of maintenance in the area lately I don't know why or what but we have a split I don't know what it's called we have two um, two connections. We have a 5G for when we're all in the living room. It's a stronger connection, but you have to be close. And then we have 2.4 um, for when you're in the bedrooms. And I'm in the back of the house, so I can't get any internet back here. But when I go in the other room, I have internet. So um, hopefully, it, I looked it up. It says they're doing maintenance and should be restored shortly. So We'll cross our fingers. I don't want to get halfway through rendering this video and then it go back out. <laughs> so, all right, I'm just going to ink around these hearts. 
All this technology is so awesome when it works properly. We, we get so spoiled, don't we, to having everything at our beck and call that when, when the internet goes down, we're like freaking out. Okay. But we do use it for a lot more than we used to, so. Okay. Alrighty. <clears throat> so I'm gonna just glue those on um, about halfway from the bottom. Like so. About maybe a little over a third. And I'm just going to put that right there with the top pointing that way. And this one do the same thing. This will just be a little tuck. Okay. This stuff strings like hot glue. <laughs> Woo! Slippery. Okay. Now I'm going to put on just a little bit of cheesecloth because, you know, it's high roll. Okay. And these are just scraps, so I'm not sure how these are. Yeah, that'll work. I'm just going to stick those on there like that. And then I'm going to use the uh, Fabric Fusion to glue these little butterflies. And these butterflies are from um, Dollar Tree. I almost didn't buy these guys. Um, and I'm so glad I did because they have like a light pink, a dark pink. I think there's blue, green. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what colors they have, but I'm glad I bought them because they're perfect for this project. So just put that down there, top of the cheesecloth. Same thing here. They had other shapes, but I don't remember what they were because I just bought the butterflies. I thought, well, I might use butterflies. Okay. Now, the only thing left to do is put the ribbon in, and sometimes that's the hardest part for me. My fingers are so, my chubby little fingers don't always wanna put the, get in this loop to pull it over. Let's see, I'm going to pull that through a little bit more so I can get my fingers in here. And try not to pull this too hard because if you do, you'll rip, you'll rip your, your tag. The, um... Yeah, for some reason that's not wanting to pull at all. So let's we'll pull it this way and pull it that way. The sewing will help it not rip all the way through. That'll stop it if I do happen to cut through, but try not to do that. There we go. All right, now let's do the other one. And then I'll show you how it's going to look in our book. Because this is going to be attached two pages. Pull this through, then pull the loops. Kind of inch it in. Coax it through. Okay, so there we go. We have a right and a left, so let's pull out a page. Um, I'm just going to pull out this page for 
second. So what I will do is attach this. Oops, my butterfly's moving around. Hold on. Um, I'll attach this side about a quarter of an inch from the bottom and this, the right side. And that way we will have a tuck here, a tuck here, and a tuck here. So that's where we get the triple tuck. And it's in the shape of a tag. So, um, yeah. I think that's going to be cute. And same thing here. And that'll go there. And this will be the page that's in there. And then we'll be able to tuck whatever we want back here because it'll pretty much have most of the page. So something large, maybe some writing paper or booklet or something like that will go in there. So anyway, I hope you guys like that. That was um, one of my favorite um, pieces that I came up with a while back. Gosh, probably been at least a year um, since I did that. I think it was in one of the Rose journals that I did. Um, but... Uh, yeah, that's a fun one. Just just goes to show you don't have to use a large tag for a large tag. You can do whatever you want with it. This could have been a tag on one page and a tuck on another page. There's lots of things you can do. So um, we're trying to think outside the box, change it up a little bit. I will be back again. I think today is Friday. Tomorrow is Saturday. I don't make videos on Sunday or Monday. Um, I'm trying to do Tuesday through Saturday. So, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow, and we'll do a little bit more. I hope you guys are having fun. Um, I'm trying not to overwhelm you too much if you're following along. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, oh, really quick, before I go, um, I had a question yesterday about the cheesecloth, and I just wanted to show you the difference. This is the cheesecloth that I use. Hang on a second guys, let me reach up here. Uh, okay, I ordered on Amazon. This one, well that's that doesn't go there. This one right here is 90 grade. I don't know, I, hopefully you can see this is a much tighter weave. This one that I love, love, love to use is 50 grade. And this is the one that I use when I'm making cheese. My daughter and I make mozzarella cheese and feta cheese. Oh, that's my favorite. Um, you're supposed to age it 10 days. Ours never makes it to the 10 day mark. So, cause we <laughs> can't keep our fingers out of it. But um, quite a bit of difference in the weave there. This is going to be 50, this is 90. Um, I do get the unbleached because I like the natural look. But um, I did get these on Amazon. I want to say this one was about $8. Some of them come with strings, some don't. I think this one came with like a string of some sort. But um, you can get this lots of places. But just so you know, if you want to be able to pull it apart pretty easily, you want the 50 grade. Um, the 90 I use more as a fabric than I do as cheesecloth. So I hope that answers some questions. Thank you, Connie, for your question. Enjoyed chatting with you last night. I will talk to you all soon. Bye now.